Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God would no more want you to live in sickness than He wants you to live in sin. He has forgiven you of sin and healed you of sickness the same way. It was bit by bit and we really had to ease into it just because it was everything against I'd ever been taught. Our lives have been completely changed. Now it's normal for me and my brothers to go and play soccer with friends. I didn't think that that would become normal for me ever. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I started last week talking about God Won't You Well. I've got a book on this and I tell you, we have seen thousands and thousands of miraculous healings through this. And this isn't just true for other people. This God wants you well. So we've got this book. I've got that same teaching in a study guide, DVDs, CDs. We've got it all condensed into this little uh, pamphlet here, booklet, that has the main scriptures in there and summarizes things. We're giving this away as a free gift. But then we also have a USB with over 12 of my teachings that relate to healing. There's probably 30 or 40 hours worth of teaching in this. We have uh, this healing university that I put together with my entire staff. And we also have uh, Dwayne Sheriff uh, in here, but a lot of them are our teachers from our Bible school. There's over 60 hours worth of teaching in here. And that healing university also includes all of our uh, videos of people that have been healed. And I've shown a number of those and anyway, we just got a wealth of material. There are li I've got hundreds of hours of teaching right here on the subject of healing. And I promise you, if you were to listen to this, I believe it'd be nearly impossible for you to stay sick. God wants you well. And what I was getting at on our last Friday's broadcast was showing that Jesus is the express image of the Father. He says, whatever the Father does is what I do. And Jesus never made anybody sick. He never told anybody, you stay sick a little longer. You hadn't learned your lesson. He never punished anybody with sickness. As a matter of fact, Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power and with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is of the devil. Sickness doesn't come from God. And if you ever waver on that point, you won't see healing. You know, when the Lord touched my life, I was raised in a denomination that taught that God uses sickness to humble you, to break you, so that those are positive things. Also that God uses sickness to punish you as judgment. Well, there are examples of God putting sickness on people in the Old Testament, but it was always a punishment. It was never a blessing. And Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. So under the new covenant, God is not punishing any of His children with sickness. And I began to learn these things, but did you know what? It was, it was a renewing of the mind. It takes a process to get this done. And there was a woman who was like a spiritual mother to me. She was really a godly influence in my life and had accomplished a lot of good things. And um, she was over at my house, uh, my mother's house. I was married at this time. My mother, my sister, my wife, and I were there talking to this lady. And I forgot exactly how we got on it, but she got to talking about that God sometimes puts sickness on people and even kills them because it's His will. And I said, no. And I started saying that, that healing is a part of the atonement of the Lord. And she got mad at me and she started saying, no, God does this. And I said, no, He doesn't. And it was the first time I'd ever stood up to her. And honestly, in my heart, I wasn't upset or mad, but I was just not going to compromise on this truth that God had shown me. So anyway, I stood up and this lady got mad and she left. And when she left, my mother, my sister, and my wife jumped on me like a coat, uh, like a coat of paint, you know, and just got to rebuking me. How dare you talk to her that way? And I said, look, I didn't mean anything by it, but I'm just not going to compromise on this, that God is not the author of sickness and disease and poverty and all of these things. 
But here's the reason I'm telling this story. This got me condemned, and I felt like I shouldn't have done this. And I got the feeling condemned, and I repented of it. And my son, Joshua, was just about a year old at that time, and he got sick. And uh, I won't go into all the details, but it was bad. And I mean, it looked really bad. And I was standing and believing for his healing as best I knew how, and I wasn't seeing it happen. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on. And finally, this man, Marshall Townsley, who's a pastor in Albuquerque, New Mexico now, and Marshall and Cindy were really close to us. He was my associate pastor in Seagaville, Texas. He came over and sat on my stereo and he got to rebuking me. And he says, you know what? You preach the grace of God and you preach that God's not the one who's putting things on you and that God isn't punishing you with sickness, but you can't live it. He said, you're a hypocrite. And he just blasted me. And his wife, Cindy, on their way home, it was only a five minute trip from their house to uh, our house, but in that short period of time, Cindy got on his case and said, how dare you speak to Andrew that way? Andrew's prayed for you and helped you and done all these things. And, and so she condemned him and he turned around to come back and apologize for being so strong with me. But did you know that by the time he got back to our house, my son was completely healed. The fever had broken and he was healed because it was the truth. And I realized what happened was I got to feeling guilty over the way I had talked to this woman, felt like I did it wrong, and I felt like my son getting sick, that this was God's punishment. Either he did it or he was so upset with me over the way I had acted that he wouldn't intervene in my behalf. But one way or the other, I had gotten out of faith and I was thinking that God was punishing us and dealing with us. And when I saw the truth, I rejected that guilt and condemnation and my son got healed. And there are many of you watching this program right now that you may not even realize it, but you don't have any confidence that God is going to heal because you feel like, I don't deserve it, or this is punishment, or maybe I'm supposed to learn something. And those things keep you from aggressively reaching out and just taking your healing. You've got to get past that. You've got to know that healing is a part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus. Did you know that the Greek word sozo, sozo, S-O-Z-O, it's used over 300, I think it's closer to 360 something times in the New Testament. And it's a word that encompasses everything that Jesus did for us. And it refers to forgiveness of sins, but that same Greek word sozo is also translated healed over in like James chapter uh, five, let me turn over and just read this verse. In verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. That word save there is sozo. Same word that was translated forgiveness of sins. The point that I'm making through this is that modern day Christianity has divided what Jesus did into different parts, saying that the forgiveness of sins is the only thing that applies to every person. And he died for the sins of the whole world. But healing is conditional and he may or may not heal you. He may or may not bless you financially. He may or may not give you joy and peace. They look at all of those things as optional, but the Bible doesn't make that distinction. This word sozo that is used over 300 and something times in the New Testament, it just applies to healing. It applies to deliverance. It applies to forgiveness of sins. It's all a part of the one thing. Over in Psalms 103, verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And then verse 3 says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. All thy diseases. Forgiveness of sins and healing of our body is put in the same verse. 
The same thing is done in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, where it says, "...who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed." It puts healing in the past tense. Forgiveness of sins and healing, again, is combined into the one scripture. And I'm telling you that healing is a part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. God would no more want you to live in sickness than He wants you to live in sin. He has forgiven you of sin and healed you of sickness the same way. And He doesn't want you to live in sin and He doesn't want you to live in sickness. Healing is a part of the atonement of Jesus. And it's wrong to piecemeal what God did. You know, if somebody brought me a gift and say this table that I'm sitting in front of, they just put all of these gifts on there and all of these things that they had for me. And I looked at it and I said, well, you know what? I'm going to take this one gift, but all the rest of this, thank you, but no thanks. I'm not going to take advantage of it. If a person gave all of these things to me, that wouldn't bless them. Jesus died to provide not only forgiveness of our sins, but healing of our bodies and prosperity and deliverance and joy and peace and vision and on and on you could go. And he's provided all of these things. And the modern day church, for whatever reason, is basically said, you know, I'm only going to accept forgiveness of sins. And then it's when we get to heaven that we will experience complete healing and joy and peace and all of that. But right now, uh, all we can expect is just to get saved and stuck. We're just holding on until we go to heaven. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6, He says, Pray thy will uh, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus told us to pray for God's will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Is there going to be sickness in heaven? No. We are supposed to expect to walk in healing now. I'm not condemning anybody who's sick any more than I'm condemning any person who's living in sin. But I'm saying that, God, that's not God's will for you. You can live in sin. You could never accept salvation, and God still loves you. But you know what? You, you are rejecting the greatest offer that was ever made. And ultimately, if you don't accept the forgiveness that is offered through Jesus, you'll have to go and be separated from God throughout eternity. Man, that's not good. And I love people enough to tell them that you need to make Jesus the Lord. Well, I'm not condemning you if you're sick, but I love you enough to tell you that God doesn't want you to be sick. That is not God's will for you. Jesus paid for your physical healing just as much as He paid for your forgiveness of sins. Let me use this passage over in Matthew chapter 8. Jesus had just ministered to people in the synagogue. Then he went into Peter's house. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. This is a separate issue, but if Peter had a mother-in-law, it means he had a wife. For those who believe Peter was the first pope and that ministers, especially priests, can't be married, you aren't following Scripture at all. Peter had a mother-in-law and she was healed. And then it says right here in Matthew chapter 8, in verse 14, And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Again, this is a point that I made last week, that if Jesus really represented God and showed us exactly the way that God is, well, then that means that God heals all that were sick because that's what Jesus did. Jesus never refused to heal anybody. He healed all that were sick. And it goes on to say in verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. This is a quotation from Isaiah chapter 53. And over in Isaiah chapter 53, let me just read these verses to you. This was a prophecy about Jesus. And man, it, this is one of the most awesome prophecies 
IN THE BIBLE IS HERE IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 53. AND IN VERSE 4 IT SAYS, SURELY HE HATH borne OUR GRIEFS AND CARRIED OUR SORROWS. THAT WAS WHAT WAS BEING QUOTED OVER THERE IN MATTHEW CHAPTER 8, VERSE 17. IT'S QUOTING FROM THIS. AND SO IN THE NEXT VERSE DOWN HERE IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 53, VERSE 5, IT SAYS, BUT HE WAS WOUNDED FOR OUR TRANSGRESSIONS. HE WAS BRUISED FOR OUR INIQUITIES. THE CHASTISEMENT OF OUR PEACE WAS UPON HIM, AND WITH HIS STRIPES WE ARE HEALED. MAN, THIS IS SO SPECIFIC, TALKING ABOUT THE SACRIFICE THAT JESUS MADE ON THE CROSS AND THE STRIPES THAT HE BORE, AND BY HIS STRIPES WE WERE HEALED. DID YOU KNOW THE RELIGION AS A WHOLE HAS JUST IGNORED THIS AND SAID, NO, THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT PHYSICAL HEALING. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT SPIRITUAL, EMOTIONAL HEALING, THAT WE WERE CRIPPLED PHYSICALLY OR EMOTIONALLY, AND GOD NOW HAS MADE IT SO THAT WE CAN WALK WITH HIM, THAT WE WERE BROKEN DOWN AND BEAT DOWN, YOU KNOW, MENTALLY AND STUFF, AND, and they, THEY MAKE ALL OF THIS, THEY SPIRITUALIZE IT. BUT IT LITERALLY IS TALKING ABOUT PHYSICAL HEALING BECAUSE IT QUOTES THESE VERSES AND SAYS, WHEN JESUS HEALED ALL OF THE PEOPLE, ALL OF THE PEOPLE THAT WERE SICK, THIS WAS THE FULFILLMENT OF ISAIAH'S PROPHECY. SO WHEN IT SAYS, BY HIS STRIPES WE ARE HEALED, IT IS TALKING ABOUT PHYSICAL HEALING. JESUS BORE YOUR SICKNESS SO THAT YOU COULD WALK IN HEALTH. IT'S A PART OF THE ATONEMENT. AND IF YOU AREN'T IN HEALTH, GOD LOVES YOU. I'M NOT SAYING HE'S MAD AT YOU, BUT I'M SAYING YOU AREN'T ACCEPTING WHAT HE'S DONE FOR YOU. THE FIRST STEP IN RECEIVING HEALING IS YOU'VE GOT TO KNOW THAT THIS ISN'T OPTIONAL. IT'S NOT JUST FOR A FEW PEOPLE. IT'S NOT GOD JUST CHOOSES TO HEAL ONE AND SKIPS A FEW AND THEN HEALS ANOTHER. NO, JESUS WANTS EVERY PERSON HEALED. THAT'S WHAT HE DID WHEN HE WAS HERE, AND HE WANTS YOU WELL. AND YOU'VE GOT TO KNOW THAT THIS IS A PART OF THE ATONEMENT OF THE LORD JESUS CHRIST. JESUS HAS PROVIDED HEALING FOR YOU, AND HE WANTS YOU WELL. LET ME JUST BACK UP AND READ SOME OF THIS IN ITS CONTEXT. REMEMBER THAT MEN ARE THE ONES THAT DIVIDED THE BIBLE INTO CHAPTERS AND VERSES, AND THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH THAT. IT ALLOWS US TO BE ABLE TO TURN AND READ SCRIPTURE AND REFERENCE THINGS, AND SO IT'S FINE. BUT YOU GOT TO REMEMBER THAT THE BIBLE WASN'T WRITTEN IN CHAPTER AND VERSES. AND THE BOOK OF ISAIAH, IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 52, THIS ISN'T A DISCONNECTED uh, PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE. IT'S ALL IN CONTEXT RIGHT HERE. SO THIS IS STILL TALKING ABOUT THE SACRIFICE OF JESUS AS RECORDED IN ISAIAH 53. BUT LOOK AT THIS IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 52, AND IT SAYS IN VERSE 14, IT SAYS, AS MANY WERE ASTONISHED AT THEE, HIS VISAGE WAS SO MARRED. AND IF I HAD TIME, I COULD SHOW YOU THIS IS STILL TALKING ABOUT JESUS, AND THIS IS SAYING IN THE SAME WAY AS WE BORE SHAME, JESUS BORE OUR SHAME. IN THE SAME WAY, that WHATEVER IT WAS THAT WE'VE SUFFERED, JESUS SUFFERED IT TO REDEEM US FROM THOSE THINGS. SO THIS IS WHAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT. IT'S TALKING ABOUT JESUS. AS MANY WERE ASTONISHED AT THEE, HIS VISAGE WAS SO MARRED MORE THAN ANY MAN. YOU KNOW, VISAGE IS AN OLD ENGLISH WORD. I'M READING OUT OF THE KING JAMES BUT IT MEANS FACE. HIS FACE WAS MARRED MORE THAN ANY MAN, AND IT GOES ON TO SAY, AND HIS FORM MORE THAN THE SONS OF MAN. AND THEN IT CONTINUES TO TALK ABOUT THESE THINGS. DOWN IN CHAPTER 53, VERSES 4 AND 5, IT TALKS ABOUT HE WAS WOUNDED FOR OUR TRANSGRESSIONS, BRUISED FOR OUR INIQUITIES. BY HIS STRIPES WE WERE HEALED. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THAT CRUCIFIXION, AND DURING THAT TIME, HIS VISAGE, HIS FACE WAS MARRED MORE THAN ANY MAN. YOU KNOW, I HAVEN'T SEEN EVERYTHING THAT HAS EVER HAPPENED TO PEOPLE, BUT I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME TO ME THAT HAD THEIR NOSE AND, and MOUTH, LIPS EATEN OFF BY CANCER, AN EYE EATEN OUT AND GROWTHS COMING OUT. I'VE SEEN DEFORMITIES ON PEOPLE. DID YOU KNOW THAT JESUS' FACE WAS MARRED MORE THAN THAT? AND THIS DIDN'T HAPPEN ONLY THROUGH THE ROMANS BEATING HIM. I'M SURE THAT WHEN THEY PUT THAT CROWN OF THORN ON HIS hand, HEAD, THAT IT PUNCTURED HIM, HE BLED. I'M SURE THAT HE, he uh, WAS HIT WITH SOME OF THESE STRIPES AND THINGS, BUT HIS FACE WAS FAR BEYOND JUST HUMAN BEATING. HE LITERALLY TOOK OUR SICKNESS AND OUR DISEASE INTO HIS OWN BODY ON THE TREE. EVERY PHYSICAL MALADY 
that the earth has ever experienced entered into the physical body of Jesus, and His face became marred more than any man. That's amazing. And it goes on to say that His form more than the sons of man. If you look that up in the NIV, it's something to the effect that He didn't even look human. You know, I saw the movie, The Passion of the Christ, and it was rated R because it was so brutal. And yet Mel Gibson, the one who made that movie, said that if he would have portrayed it the way he believes that the Scripture actually described it, it would have been triple X rated. Nobody would have come to see it. So he, by his own admission, he toned it down some. But even at that, it was so brutal what they did to Jesus. And yet you could recognize that this was a man hanging on the cross. But these Scriptures says, that his face was marred more than any man and his form so that he didn't even look human. That wasn't only the physical beating in the crucifixion that did that. Every sickness, every deformity, I've seen pictures of people that have terrible deformities and elephantitis where their legs swell up two and three times the size and just on and on. Every one of those sicknesses, all of those diseases, entered into the body of Jesus. And my point is that if Jesus bore those sicknesses and took all of those things for me, why in the world would I not accept and receive the healing that He provided? And yet there's religion today that'll say, nope, it's not for everybody. Only some people get healed. Maybe God wants to make you sick to teach you something. Maybe this is punishment. That's not so. I'm telling you, Jesus bore all of our sickness and all of our disease, and He wants you well. And the reason that He did this for you is because He loves you. And He didn't just die for the forgiveness of your sins. He also died for the healing of your body to provide your needs. He wants to be Lord over every single part of your life. And Jesus suffered these things for you. Why? There's no reason for you to suffer them. When you sit there and, and allow sickness to stay in your body, and some of you are thinking, I'm not allowing it. Yes, you are. By not reaching out and by faith receiving, your passiveness is allowing Satan to do these things. James 4, 7 says you have to resist the devil, and then he'll flee from you. You have to resist sickness. You have to actively fight against it. I know it may not be intentional on your part, but our passiveness is allowing sickness to dominate us. And if you ever see what Jesus did for you, and if you understand that He became sin, He became sick, He bore whatever it is that you're dealing with so that you wouldn't have to deal with it. If you ever get the revelation of that, I guarantee you that right there is 90% of the battle. Now, there's a lot of other things about how you uh, faith is voice activated, and I'm going to be sharing a lot of things, but the, but the foundation of everything is you've got to know that healing has been provided for you. It's a part of the atonement. God doesn't want you to be sick any more than He wants you to live in sin. If you wouldn't go live in sin, don't live in sickness. Man, those are radical statements. I've got a lot of material on this. I encourage you to please get it. We're giving away this free little booklet that summarizes a lot of things that are in this book entitled, God Wants You Well. I've also got a study guide and CDs and DVDs that were taken from my television program where you can get that. We've got a healing university with over 60 hours worth of teaching in it. I've got this little USB. Just a lot of stuff. Listen to our announcer and please call or write today.